Hi there, it's Thomas again. Now we're on to part three of our talks about intervention and culture jamming. In this talk I'm going to talk about five or six contemporary artists who are very involved in the idea of intervention and culture jamming. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm a member of the Imperial Senate on a diplomatic mission to Alderaan. Oh, I'm the Rebel Alliance and a traitor. Take her away. Move along. Move along. So Improv Everywhere is a, an organization of New York City who do these improvisational actions and um, entertainments, um, performances across the city. Um, they, on their website, have this statement, Every, Improv Everywhere causes scenes of chaos and joy in public places. In fact, their tagline is, we create scenes. One of the Improv Everywhere actors was very, very motivated to explore this idea of this scene from Star Wars because the doors of the subway, as they slide open, made them recall that very, very important moment in the beginning of that film. And thus, the commuters on the train are then turned into uh, flies on the wall of the rebel ship. Keith Obadiki is an artist that was mentioned in the New Media Art Book by Tribe and Jaina. In Blackness for Sale, Owadiki grabs the eBay as a publishing format to write a essay on race relations in the United States, it very thinly veiled as a bill of sale or an auction. Um, Owadiki is recognizing that more people read eBay than most print publications and so it actually is a platform that we can intervene into to actually use as a publishing medium. Um, in his essay here he um, has a few statements that um, show us exactly what he's up to. Um, I'd like to read a couple of them. It has a brief description and then some benefits and warnings. The description starts, 
This heirloom has been in the possession for the sell of the seller for 28 years. Mr. Obadiki's blackness has been used primarily in the United States, and its functionality outside the U.S. cannot be guaranteed. Uh, start with the benefits. This blackness may be used for creating black art. This blackness may be used for writing critical essays or scholarships about blacks. Some of the warnings. The seller does not recommend that this blackness be used during legal proceedings of any kind. The seller does not recommend that this blackness be used while seeking employment. The seller does not recommend that this blackness be used in the process of making or selling serious art. So we can see the essay that he's building. He's talking about the both the these benefits and drawbacks of being a particular race in the United States. Artmark is also an artist group that's mentioned in the New Media Art Book by Tribe and Jaina. And they're sometimes referred to as a corporate clearinghouse. The folks behind Artmark take on this persona of a corporation in response to the increasing corporate life that we live in. And Artmark then represents this sort of invisible, overarching company who then take proposals and um, list them so that funders and investors can invest in interventionist acts. Such as the NYAM, it's um, brought up on this screen here. It was a project in um, Paris, I believe. In a McDonald's, make and serve real hamburgers made with real fresh meat from the butchers, vegetables from the market, and good bread. This education and taste should be geared especially to children. You, as an interventionist artist, could propose something like this, and people could donate funds to support or sponsor your project. Border Crossing by Bunting and Brandon in the early 2000s is an interesting website. It's a website of information on how to cross transnational and geopolitical boundaries not going through official channels, not passing through the normal border patrol procedures where they check papers. Um, it was the material in the website as project was not aestheticized. It was very, very brief and blunt. It was like, you have to go here, you have to do this exactly in order to cross this border. Um, Bunting talks about he's not interested in aestheticizing that idea. He wants the information to be there. Interestingly enough, these very, very moving sort of images come out of cataloging how to move across the landscape because many of these places are very remote and have very few people in them. So uh, um, some very, very lyrical images do emerge despite their determination that it was just going to be a project about ideas. Um, on the website uh, for this project, uh, I got a quote here, National borders are increasingly front lines of political and social dissent. Asylum seeking and political migrations are some of the most significant issues of our time. Bunting's Border Crossing Guide website primarily consists of documentation of the walks that transverse national boundaries without the interruption from customs, immigration, or border police. Kanarinka Projects is a uh, group based out of the East Coast near Boston, and they um, work with collective strategies that are very related to the situation in international, where they're very interested in these ideas of how the forms and the methods of the, of the place we live actually affect how we behave the psychogeographic idea. Their methodologies often engage the public um, through methods like dressing themselves as researchers from the Institute for Infinitely Small Things. 
Um, the reason that this engages so well is the part of the world that they're in has several major influential research universities. And so by taking on that role, they can infiltrate. This project, Free Fear from USA, was a shop dropping or like insertion. You shop lift, well shop droppings when you leave something behind, of the New American Dictionary um, uh, Security and Fear Edition, a new publication made to look like a dictionary by Conorinka. Conorinka Project um, assets, agents, whatever you want to call them, drop off this dictionary in local bookstores up in Vancouver, Canada. It's an interesting idea to make a dictionary that reflects your time. Um, it's an equally additional, uh, equal and additionally interesting idea to drop it off or insert it by giving it away and sharing it with the world. So this idea, freeing us from the fear in the USA, and also here, have some free fear from the USA. Or their projects call, uh, from a few years back called Corporate Commands, where they recognize that in advertising, we're surrounded all the time by these commands. The very famous examples illustrated here is Singular and their command slash ad campaign roll over where the Institute for Infinitely Small Things was, would assemble themselves on the sidewalks outside a singular store and then would yell out roll over whenever a pedestrian needed to pass. The last artist we'll look at in the slideshow are the Yes Men. And it's a the Yes Men are a team of um, corporate infiltrators the conti to, who, who sh shit disturb as a profession. Um, they're actually very closely related to the Art Mark group um, because, because of the, and um, interested in these ideas of how corporations affect our lives. Um, the Yes Men are also political activists. They go out to infiltrate businesses, governments, and other sorts of institutions who they feel are um, engaging in some sort of practice that could be very, very harmful to society or the world. Uh, their films, The Yes Men and The Yes Men Fix the World, document some of the most important actions they've been up to in the last 10 years. This is available both through Netflix and also a legal peer-to-peer -peer video sharing service called Vodo, so please look for it. They specialize in shining re a really bright light on social injustice by posing as actual members of the corporation. In 2009, they staged an elaborate reinvention of Swift's modest proposal. Uh, also known, this process is also known as Vivolium. Let's watch the clip, the tribute video that they put together. You, la la ma, you make me whole. Oh, now I know. Well, I knew Reggie because he was our cleaning man in the Houston head office. Reggie was a uh, was a great worker. He uh, he did a great job at our company. Down to earth, kind hearted, willing to do anything for anybody. A giant heart. He's such a hard worker, such a fun guy. He never complained one bit. In fact, we always could tell Reggie was in a good mood because he had a particular way, a very funny way of humming. Mm -hmm. He would just be singing because that's the type of guy he was. He was just always happy and always just like. You know, when Reggie was there, it was the workplace was alive, and good or bad, or rain or snow, or hot or cold, he was singing away. It was, it was, uh, it was something. It touched me. I worked in maintenance for a while. Moved up to uh, 
maintenance too. Start doing cleanup. We had a level three alert. I don't know, I just kind of blew it, I guess. After uh, I heard from the doctor that I was gonna die, uh, I felt like I had something to live for. It's a very brave uh, choice that Reggie made. I'm gonna die anyways. <laughs> Uh, yeah, might as well give it, a, give it a whirl. Reggie was willing to make that sacrifice for the betterment of uh, humanity. So for that, uh, we all, we all salute him. I think I'd like to be, a, I think I'd like to be a, a, a candle. I think a candle would be fun because you can. There's just so many uses for a candle. I mean, you know, like if you, if you want something romantic, like that'd be nice to know. I was a candle on table. You know, when people, uh, when they first met each other on a date. <laughs> I think that that would be great. I'd love that. That'd be, that'd be a hoot. You light up my life. You make me know the thing I work for. You take me on, man. Everything is better because you want me to be by your side. So the Yes Men posing as executives of Exxon go to an oil industry conference in Canada. As Exxon, or in their fantasy world, they imagine Exxon developing a new biofuel. We know, or it's projected, I guess I should say, it's projected that the world's going to run out of, of um, oil in sometime this century. We're turning our attentions to this idea of biofuel. The project imagined by the S-Men is Exxon's solution to where to get material to, to make the new biofuel and you would use the victims of the climate change itself. So their proposal is to produce vivoleum from the corpses who die from that climate change. Uh, they heighten the hoax by taking these candles into the um, oil industry conference and showing this tribute video to give tribute to Reggie. Uh, Re Reggie, an Exxon janitorial employee who volunteered his body to be made into Vivolium after becoming sick from a workplace accident. Uh, we see clip, you know, the insert there from Reggie. One of the most interesting things is how in in their film it shows them getting thrown out as people realize that what they're holding is purportedly Reggie transformed into a candle. They heighten this um, effect by actually mixing hair into the wick and into the wax of the candle. So as it burns, it gives off that odor of human flesh burning. Okay, um, that takes us through this third video. Our next video is going to have several artists discussed about and projects that engaged in intervention in what I refer to as the new public space. I'll see you in that video.